Okay, let's pray. Uh, we thank you, Father, for gathering this uh, faithful believers once more for uh, our study on the book of James. Mm -mm. Father, we pray now for your uh, presence of the Holy Spirit to illuminate the word to us tonight. May our exposure to this word uh, bring your wisdom and your guidance and your leading to us as as your faithful servants, O Lord God, uh, mm -hmm. may you be exalted uh, in this study tonight. Yeah. And uh, we pray also for those who are still about to join, that may they be uh, uh, resolving the issues that are keeping them from joining us, mm -hmm. uh, so that they too may be uh, blessed and edified by your work tonight, by your teaching, okay. O Lord God. This is our prayer, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, uh, today, technically, we are going to supposedly cover verses 7 through 10. But just to give us a bigger picture, uh, a more complete context of our of our lesson for today, we're going to mm -hmm. review verse 5 and 6, which we took up last week, and then be really focusing on 7 through 10. Okay, so babasahin ko na lang yung verses 5 through 10. And here's the text. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that a scripture says, He yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace. Therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. Wow. Um, really, itong verses na to, uh, I think will be the central theme of the book of James. Uh, we all know that the purpose of the writing of the book of James is to test the genuineness of your faith. And he gave several testings from chapter 1 all the way to chapter 4 so far. And in verses 7 to 10, is really a call to respond to the testing, to respond to the invitation. So right. the testing, as we have um, uh, seen and um, learned the past couple of weeks, actually this is now the 10th the week uh, for us, for our study in the book of James. So the, the past nine nine weeks is all about testing, 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 testing. And quickly, uh, from chapter one, how do you respond to trial? Your response to trial will give you a, a, a determination, a gauge, whether you're truly in Christ or not. Everybody is going to go through problems. No exception. But a believer one who is in Christ will respond positively, knowing that it will only make him closer to God. Temptation. Um, we are all tempted, and we all uh, many times also fail, fall into sin. But a believer, when he sins, he immediately responds to it by the, confessing them to the Lord, knowing that he himself has sinned. Response to the word, our love for the word of God. A true believer has a gusto, has a new delight in knowing more and more and more what God has to say in every situation of life. Partiality. He is no longer just looking, uh, he's not being, as the Bible says, being selfish, but rather he looks at all people around him because he is no different than them. Faith and works. A true believer not only confesses boca boca, not only by words, but it is accompanied by works. This is a very important one because our works is a proof that our faith is genuine. Then our words, or as James uses, he uses the word tongue. How we um, use our tongue, what you hear yourself speak about, talk about, is really a byproduct of what our heart is full of. A person who is in Christ oftentimes will speak about God, the Bible, Christianity, church, and so on, and sin and hell and heaven 
those things are normal for a believer knowing that the most important thing in his life are the words of God. Wisdom. And um, we have learned here that there are two kinds of wisdom. The wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. And these two, wisdom and the world, is really how we live our life. Do we live our life uh, still in accordance to how the world, uh, um, uh, what, what's the word, um, entices us to do? Are we still living for ourselves? Or are we now focused on the kingdom of God? Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you as well. In other words, there is no, uh, no a better situation than to first make sure that you are truly in Christ because everything else is far, far second. Then today, in James 4, starting from verse 5 to verse 10, is not a testing, but rather it is an invitation. After all the testing, some chapters 1, verse 1, all the way to chapter 4, uh, verse 5, verse 4, are all testing. Then now, in verse 5, chapter 4, is an invitation. If you are one who, see, who have failed, all these testings or partial of this testing and therefore make a conclusion that probably you are not in Christ, then the invitation comes in. Now, having said that, invitation, let me just share with you, and many of you are fully aware of this, that as far as salvation is concerned, there are two doctrines that are seemingly contradicting one another, right? The first doctrine is the doctrine of the sovereign election of God. We do know, and there's a lot of verses that speaks about the election of God. One of them is, is in Ephesians 1, where it says, Before the foundation of the world, God has chosen those who will be His. So God chosen before the foundation of the world. So that's the sovereign election of God. In other words, our, salva our salvation is totally dependent on, on God. In the book of Romans, uh, Paul says, uh, those whom he called, he sanctifies. Those he sanctifies, he glorifies. So the election of God, as far as salvation is concerned, is totally dependent on God. Uh, John 1 says, to those who received him, he gave the right to become children of God, born not of human descent, not of a father's will, but born of God. So salvation, as far as the doctrine of the sovereign election of God, is totally dependent on God. Now, having said that, there is another doctrine, doctrine for salvation, which might sound and, uh, and seems like contradicting to this doctrine. It is called the doctrine of the free will of man. The doctrine of the free will of man, as, as uh, simply put, is that salvation is dependent on the choice of man. Your choosing and my choosing will determine whether we will be saved or not. So in the book of James, James will not be focusing on the sovereign election of God. He will be focusing on the doctrine of the free will of man, that you are, the, um, you are a factor in determining your salvation or not whether you're going to hell or going to spend eternity with God. Your choice, my choice. And there are many, many verses in scriptures that speaks about the doxy of the free will of man in relationship to our salvation. Let me uh, quote several of them. Chapter 1, 11 of uh, John. He came to that which was his own, that's Jesus. But his own did not receive him. So that's a choice. The Jewish people rejected Christ. That's a choice. That's a free will of man. Yet to all who did receive him, again, that's a choice. People who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So here is the doctrine of the free will of man. You can either receive him 
which is synonym to believing in him, or you can choose to reject him. Your choice. Matthew 7, 13 to 14. An invitation to come in uh, into the kingdom of God. Enter the narrow gate. That's in the imperative. In other words, it's a command. Go in. Then he gives a choice. For what is the gate and what is the road that leads to destruction? And many enter through it. He did not stop people from uh, entering the, 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 the wide gate, the, the gate that leads to destruction. It's your choice. Verse 14. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Again, it's an option, it's a choice of man to exercise his will, whether he would want to go in to destruction or in to the narrow narrow gate. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Jesus, again, invites people. Come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Your choice. I'm inviting you. Come to me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You will find salvation. If you come to me and I invite you to come to me, says the Lord, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 16, 24. Jesus said to his disciple, whoever wants to be my disciple, again, a choice. You want to be my disciple or you don't want to be my disciple? You make a choice. So whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For Whoever, that's a choice. Not all, only whoever. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. So again, it's under the doctrine of the free will of man that our salvation is, is based on your choice and my choice. John 16, we are very familiar for God's love the world that he gave his one and only son. Then the next line, that whoever, not everybody, only those who make this choice, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. In other words, those who will not believe will perish. Another verse, Second Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you. Why is he patient? Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. The Lord is saying, you know what? I want to come back. I want to rapture you, take you out of this world, and uh, end, end, uh, end uh, the, the life on earth as you know it. But all at the same time, I am delaying it. Because I want to people to still have time to make a choice, to make a decision, to surrender their life to me, and so be with me for eternity. Again, your choice. More verses. John 8. To the Jews who had believed him, he said, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, again, it's conditional, only if, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, it's your choice. If you don't want to hold to my teaching, if you don't want to submit uh, uh, to my righteousness, your choice. But if you do hold to my teaching, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Isaiah. Now, this is very important, because this grace that the Lord has given us, is time bound. There will come a time that it will no longer be made available. That uh, the salvation of God is going to come to a cut of time. And in the book of Isaiah 55, uh, Isaiah says, Seek the Lord, here you go, while he may be found, call on him while he is near. That word while means that it is uh, there is a, a, a deadline. 
is still available but at a certain point in time. A, an a, a availability that you can find God and availability that you can call on God. Who are those who are supposed to seek and call? The wicked, let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Wicked, unrighteous are synonym meaning sinners. You need to turn around away from your sins and away from your sinful thoughts. Then the next line, very important. Let them turn to the Lord. Okay, turn around. And he will have mercy on them and to our God, for he will freely pardon. Who? To those who turn to the Lord. Who will turn to the Lord? Those who are wicked and unrighteous. Who are the wicked and the unrighteous? Every human being in the world. The Lord says, if you turn around, call on the Lord while he still may be found. Call on him and uh, seek him. If you do, he will freely pardon. Oh, beautiful. Next, John 7. Jesus says, if you recall, when, when, when he studied the book of John, Jesus said to all the, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, I am with you for only a short time. And then I'm going to the one who sent me. And then here's the problem. Jesus is saying, at that time when I go back to the Father, you will look for me, but you will not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. The day will come. Now, obviously, when in John 7, he was speaking about his resurrection. But also at the same time, Jesus is already warning everybody that the time will come when the cup of period, the grace, the grace period will come to an end. And when that comes, there will be people who will suddenly say, okay, okay, now, Lord, I, I want to follow you. But Jesus says, no, no, at that time, you will look for me, but you will not find me. Where's that? That's basically hell. You can cry out to the Lord all you want for eternity, but that's it. You will not find him. This one is beautiful. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Paul speaking to the church in Corinth. As God's co-workers, we urge you. That word urge. You know, we are seeking. We, we want you. We urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. What does that mean? Because there are people in the church in Corinth who have, quote unquote, received the grace of God in vain. What's in vain? Useless. Walang gamit. No effect. They have the, uh, 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 um, as Paul says in the book of Romans, um, they have the form of godliness but denies the power of God. They have the external religiosity of, of, of a follower of Jesus, but they are not saved. So Paul is saying, I urge you, please, 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 do not waste this because the time is coming that the cut off will come. You are almost there. You're attending church. You're attending Bible study. You know about Christianity. But what, what a regret if you receive God's grace in vain. Then verse 2, he says, for he says, he, he quotes God. In the time of my favor, of God's favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I help you. Question. When is the time and when is the day of God's favor and God's salvation? When is that? When will it take effect? Paul concludes, I tell you, church in Corinth, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the time of salvation. You want to make sure 
you who already attend church, you already who attend Bible study, you who profess that you are a Christian, you want to make sure that when you receive God's grace, it was not in vain. Useless. Useless profession. Useless uh, going to church. Useless going to Bible study. You don't want that to happen. You want to make sure today, while the favor of God and the salvation of God, the grace of God is still made available. That is what we're going to see today. The invitation of God in James chapter 4, verse 5 to 10. There is no uh, uh, more comprehensive invitation in scriptures than James 4, 5 to 10. Here, James is focusing on the responsibility of man to accept and to receive the, that invitation. He doesn't point out to the sovereign uh, election of God, which we all do know that before the foundation of the world, God had chosen. But all at the same time, every human being, to those who believe, God gave them the right to become children of God. The human responsibility, the, uh, the act of the will of man to choose God to turn away from sin. So let's begin. Let's review verse 5 and 6, which we took last week. James says, So after saying all the best things, that, uh, to know that you are truly in the faith, then he says, verse 5, Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says, He, that's God, yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? So to clarify first, I think this um, the question was asked last week. What is this spirit? Well, the spirit is small s. That's not God. That's not the Holy Spirit. The spirit that you and I have, the one that will live for eternity. So God yearns, and the word yearn, I went to Mr. Webster and asked Mr. Webster, what is the word yearn? According to Mr. Webster, to yearn? is to have an intense feeling. Gustong gusto talaga. There's a craving, an intense feeling of longing for something. Typically something that one has lost or been separated. Intense feeling. So if we connect that once again, that it says here, God yearns having an intense feeling to be reconciled with the spirit of man. Did you know that God wants you and every human being in the world to be with him? That is why, as Peter have said, you know, um, the Lord is delaying his return because he does not want anyone to perish. You reverse that because he wants everyone to be saved. He yearns for it. And he is jealous. He yearns jealously because as he looks at humanity, there are many people, multitudes, who have submitted themselves to the enemy, to the devil. They are not willing to turn away from their sin. So God is saying, no, I want everyone. And if you are here today and you are still kind of not sure, and maybe our study of James 1, uh, all the way to chapter 4 so far, you have several check on the different testing, but all at the same time, there are also several that are not checked. You, you don't want that to happen. You want to be sure. You want to be sure. And God is saying here, He wants you. Then verse 6. But, he gives more grace. Oh, this is beautiful. Inasmuch as <clears throat> there are those who is who has not turned to God yet. What James is saying here, but God's grace is still available. He gives more grace. It's available. It will not run out. To as many who will receive him, he gave them the rights to become children of God. 
to those who receive him, to those who believe in his name. <clears throat> Therefore, James concludes, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. These are two groups of people, the proud people and the humble people. Another way of saying, the proud people are the unbelievers and the humble people are the believers. This is not just about becoming boastful. No, no. The proud is that because they are trying to attain salvation by their own merits, by their own good works, by their own capacity. They are the proud, and the proud God opposes. He rejects, but grace is given to the humble, to those who submit, to those who surrender, to those who turn away, to those who acknowledge and say, I cannot make it. I am nobody. I do not deserve it. What I deserve is eternity in hell. I am evil. To those people, he gave grace. And grace is favor. Something you do not deserve. Why? Because what you deserve is to go to hell. Now, bringing it all back to context. The context is that these are written and said to people who are already in the church. To be more specific, in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 1, to the 12 tribes of Israel, to the Jewish people who were somehow connected themselves with the true believers, who somehow felt that they are already in Christ because they are religious. James is saying, well, here are the different things to know if you're truly in Christ. But then, here is the invitation. Have you really come to be a humble person? Or do you, are you still proud of your ability and of the many good things that you have done? Have you compared yourself with other people thinking that you are better than them? Or do you compare yourself and see uh, as God as the benchmark of perfection? That all have fallen short of the glory of God. Have you come to that point yet? So, what James will be answering in verse 7 to 10 is really when God gives grace to the humble, the question is, how do we become humble? How do we receive the grace of God? What is the human responsibility? What is it that you, you and I need to exercise in our will to receive the grace of God that we do not deserve and what does it mean to be humble before God? That is what we're going to uh, uh, tackle uh, today in chapter 4, verse 7 to 10. So here we go, verse 7. Oh, by the way, let me first read uh, uh, Luke 15. Um, you are very familiar with the parable of the lost sheep, right? Let me just jump to verse 7. Verse 7 says, just so I tell you, he is speaking. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. According to this verse, there are two groups of people. To begin with, the common denominator between these two groups of people that they are all sinners. But here's the difference. The first group of people, the 99 or the majority righteous person. Really, this is, the way this is being said is said sarcastically because there are no righteous people. Everybody are sinners. So when Jesus says 99 righteous people who need no repentance, th these are sinners who do not think they need to repent. They are, they, they, they are the proud people. They are the ones who think that I'm okay. I'm not as bad. Uh, uh, I have done a lot of good. These are the proud. These are the 99. These are the majority of people today, even people who goes to church. I repeat, even people who attends church, attends Bible studies, 
who are very religious do all the the external uh, uh, you know, re religious activities. These are the proud people. On the other hand, the other group of people are the one sinner, the keyword, who repents. Who sees himself to be lost. Who sees himself to be cut off from the grace of God. Who sees himself on his way to hell. Who sees himself as evil. That is the one sinner whom the Lord is seeking. So, God opposes the proud. Those are the 99, but gives grace to the humble, the one sinner who repents. So how do we receive this grace of God? How, how should we put ourselves to be people who are humble before God? James now focuses on the invitation for salvation. Verse 7. Here's how you receive the grace of God. Submit yourself then to God. Oh, such a simple line. Remember, this is the conclusion. The word then. Therefore, submit yourselves to God. Here it says, submit yourselves then to God. So this is in connection with verse 5, verse 6. Grace is available today. God opposes the proud. And God gives grace to the humble. So if you want to receive grace, how do you do it? You submit yourselves to God. Submit. Put yourself under the authority of. Again, I went to Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster, what's the word submit? Submit is to accept or to yield to a superior force, in this case God, or to the authority or will of another person. We give ourselves in submission to the will of God. You cannot try to attain salvation by your own will. You cannot create your own path to receive the righteousness of God. We need to submit to God's ways. Again, Jesus speaking, if you recall, when we took the book of John, Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees, religious people of his time. He says to the religious people, Why is my language not clear to you? Bakit yung pa hindi maintindihan? Okay? Why? Because you are, you are unable to hear what I say. Unable. You do not have the capacity to hear it. You don't have the, kung baka sa electronics pa, you don't have the proper device to hear it. Right now, radio waves are floating around. But you cannot hear the radio. Why? You do not have a device. You need to have a radio set to be able to capture the radio waves and therefore hear the radio audio. God, Jesus here is saying, you cannot hear my, my audio waves, my language, because you are unable to hear it. Why are you not able to hear it? You belong to your father, the devil. You see, here's the point. If we do not submit to God, whether you know it or not, you are now in submission to your father, the devil. We do not start off on neutral ground. It's not like, okay, uh, Mike, uh, choose. Will you follow the devil or will you follow God? No, no, no. Right now, if I'm not in Christ yet, if you're not, if I'm not in Christ yet, I am actually under the authority of the devil. The devil is not trying to win me to go to hell. He has already won me. I belong to him. But when uh, 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 James was saying here, submit to God, he was saying, you need to turn around. Submit yourself to God. You need to turn around from your being under the authority of the devil, being the child of the devil, turn around and uh, change your allegiance from the devil to God. 
That's, that's what he's saying. Okay, you build your father David. And then in Romans 10, here's the problem in Romans, uh, that the Jews. Paul says, brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer for the Israelites is that they may be saved. In other words, they are not saved. The Israelites, whom Paul is praying for and is desiring that they may be saved. Why? Why are you desiring for something to happen? Because it has not happened. They are not saved. So why is he wanting them to be saved? Verse 2. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God. They are religious people. They are, you know, uh, uh, outwardly, wow, they are totally dedicated to God. Now, dedication is not is, is not the way to be right with God. I repeat, dedication. There are people who are very dedicated. They will kneel from point A to point B. Okay? Uh, you, you can pray with your arms stretched out. There, there's dedication. Sincerity. But sincerity will not save you. Only truth will save you. So Paul says, I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but, you know, problema. But, pero, their zeal, their zealousness, their being on fire is not based on knowledge. It's not based on truth. It's not based on the will of God. You see, your dedication, your, uh, uh, you know, uh, your passion, no matter what it may be, if it's not in accordance with the will of God, it is in vain. As I posted earlier in Corinthians, may it not be that your uh, receiving of the grace of God is not in vain. Hindi na tapo, hindi na sayang. So why? Why is it in vain? Verse 3. Since they did not know the righteousness of God. Now it looks like if you stop there, we say they are ignorant about the righteousness of God. That's why. No. Here's the problem. The problem is they sought to establish their own. Their own what? Their own righteousness. This is a good definition. Sought to establish your own. A very good definition of religion. Religion is man's system on how to get right with God. I repeat. Religion is man's ways. Ang pararaan. A man's ways to get right with God. It might be nice. It might look good. You know, it might get the approval of man. But there's one problem. It's not in accordance to the will of God. And here's the biggest problem. Why did they not submit? Why? They did not submit to God's righteousness. Sabi ko na, hindi mo kaya. Sabi ko na, just turn around and I'll give you pardon. Sabi ko na, you have to repent. Ang sabi na tao, no. If only I go to church all the time, if only I do good, if only I have done more good than bad, if only I, I help the poor. If That's religiosity. God's righteousness, as Romans 3, 21, he says that Christ is the culmination of the law. It's the pinnacle of the law. All the law ends up in Christ. But people, no, no, no. I will want to do the law. I will do this. I will do that. They did not submit to... Oh, what was the thinking about Romans? Here it is, verse 4. Okay. Christ is the culmination of the law. Dulu. Now, the problem with people, after following the law, instead of saying, I cannot do it, I cannot make it, they say, oh, well, I've done I've done more obedience to the law than other people. No, Christ is the law. Uh, it's the culmination. Why? So that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. 
So here's a challenge for you and I, brothers and sisters. Listen to this carefully. Why be religious when you can be righteous? Okay, why? Why did the external religiosity look good on people, uh, try to, uh, you know, uh, get the approval of man? What for? When, really, when righteousness is made available for free. Ano ba yan? Why just be religious? So James says, Submit yourself then to God. Submit. Put yourself under the authority of and list in the kingdom of God. And list. Stop doing your own will. Stop creating your own way. Submit. Then not only that, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, let me just say this. A lot of people especially charismatic people, will use this verse and make it their basis of driving out demons. You know, demonio, be out in Jesus. That is not the point of the verse. The context of the verse, to resist the devil, based on chapter 4, because to live a life of worldly wisdom, which is controlled by the devil, is very enticing to live a comfortable, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, joyful earthly life. Live your best life now is very enticing. True or true? You know, li, you know, oh, oh, no, mabuhay ka ng, you know, magandang buhay. You know, submerge yourself in in work. Mag one job ka, two jobs. Enrich yourself. Very enticing. Live the American dream. Very enticing. But what did James says? Resist. Again, I went to Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster, on the bank word resist, here's what uh, Mr. Webster says. To resist is to withstand the action or effect of. To withstand. To go against. Another word for resist is to hold out against, to combat, to counter, to endure, to outlast, to repel, to be resistant to. To whom? To the devil. Because it's very enticing. And if you keep on submitting to the devil, then you will have no time to seek God. Resist him. And really, uh, the, the, the enticement of the devil is what made soil number two and soil number three receive the word of God with joy, but only lasted for a short time. Nandun na sila, about to enter. Papasok sila, and then the devil said, Oh, come, come ito, come. I will, I'll come, you come follow me, I'll give you promotion. I'll give you another business. I will increase that. I will increase that. And then, ang sabi ng tao, tsaka na lang. Tsaka na lang papasok. Anyway, alam ko na yung, alam ko na yung daan eh. I already know. When I, you know, when I grow older, when I retire, when, uh, fill in the blank. When I, when I. First Peter, the warning. Be alert and of sober mind. Okay? Always be conscious, particularly spiritually speaking. Always be alert and be sober minded. Yeah. Sober, the opposite of blessing, being drunk. A drunk person do not know what he's doing, right? But be sober minded. Always be aware of what? Your enemy, the devil, rolls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Para kainin. Para maging ulam. Always. Always looking for someone. The devil. 
rolls around. Right now, if not the devil himself, one, two, or a legion of demons are roaming around you and I today. And every day. Even while in church. Even while in a Bible study. He will entice you. He Remember when we took the book of Romans? The, the battleground is the mind. Okay, the battleground is the mind. Instead of focusing on the word of God, he will put in things to do. To do lists. Uy, tandaan mo, may meeting ka. Tandaan mo, okay, meron ka appointment. Tanda, et cetera, et cetera. And so therefore, the word of God is not able to be planted in your minds and in your heart deeply. You become like the rocky soil. Okay? Mababaw. Sobrang babaw. Versus the devil and he'll flee. So you want the grace of God? You want to receive the grace of God, the salvation of God? Number one, submit to God. Surrender your life to God. Totally. Number two, resist the devil because he will always entice you to be half-baked Christian. By the way, half-baked Christian is no Christian at all. I repeat, half-baked Christian is no Christian at all. Okay? Hindi pwede, uh, ano naman ako eh? Uh, Christian naman ako eh. Christian. Really? Well, then this is beautiful. Okay? First, submit to God. Resist the devil. Then, come near to God. Wow. What does it mean to come near to God? Well, obviously, right now, you are far from God. You are away from God. You are cut off from the life of God. So you, the individual, need to make a choice, an act of the will, to come near to God. And there is no better picture of this uh, coming near to God and God coming near to us than the parable of the prodigal son. And let me just come to the point where after the prodigal son left and uh, went to another country, etc., etc., and ate with pigs. Then verse 17 is a beautiful, beautiful part. When he, the prodigal son, came to his senses. Oh, I love that. When he came. The word when. A period of time when he suddenly realizes Ano ba to? When he came to his senses, senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. You see, coming to senses is the awakening. When you start to realize that you are lost, that you are away from the father, you are away from God, Remember, this is just a parable. Okay, this is a parable. This is just a story. Uh, uh, what they say, a parable is a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Okay, so here's a man who realizes I'm away from God. Then verse eighteen, he said, "I will set out and go back to my father." Oh, he made a decision. I will set out and go back to my father. Realizing you're a sinner is the beginning. Deciding to go back to the Father to restore your relationship is the second part. The third is the confession. Father, I have sinned against heaven, against you. The realization that he has wronged, that he is uh, under the wrath of God, that he is a uh, loss, he is, he is on his way to hell. I have sinned. I have no excuse. I have sinned. Then here you go. Verse 19. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Coming to God is not, you know what? Yeah, sinner ako. Pero hindi talaga ako ganun kagrabe. No, no, no. When we come to God, we have to fully realize that we are totally doomed. Not worthy at all. Zero. Not even in comparison to other people who are worse than us. Sometimes yung kasi yung problema natin eh. Uh, yes, I am lost. Pero hindi tulad ni so and so na yun talaga, grabe talaga. No. The comparison is between, between us and the righteousness and the holiness of God. 
I am no longer worthy. Then he says, make me like one of your hard servants. Then here's the beauty. Ready for this? So he got up and went to his father. So he, he acted on it. Don't just decide. Decision is no is not the same as acting. You decide, then you act. Then here's the beauty. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. So he came, the father saw, and here's now, the father came. Next line. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. See this one? I heard a song many, many, many years ago. Um, the title of the song is When God Run. Oh, such a beautiful song. When God ran to me. Uh, I forgot that the, the lyrics. Uh, anyway, <laughs> when God ran. Did you know, as soon as God sees your heart of repentance, just like Jesus, he is seeking for people who are repentant. And when he sees one, he runs to them. Whew. Threw his arms around him and kissed him. The question is, have you and I come to our senses that we are truly lost? Come near to God and he will come near to you. Then he says, another command. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Very interesting terminologies here. Sinners is obvious, okay? Unrighteous people. Uh, those who have not been born again. Those who have not been justified. They are the sinners. But here, James uses the word double-minded to refer to the word sinner. Double-minded are people who are alanganin. Parang Cristiano, pero hindi Cristiano. You know, uh, hilaw. Hilaw. Uh, I said earlier, half-baked. Well, parang krisyano naman kasi sabi na krisyano siya. Parang krisyano naman kasi, kasi lagi naman nag-a-attend ng Bible study. Lagi naman nag-church. Pero alang nga eh, kasi ang focus ng life niya is still the world. Pero alang nga eh, kasi yung priority niya is still, uh, you know, things of, uh, of, you know, things that are earthly, things that are unspiritual, and things that are demonic. Alang nga eh. Kasi pag may problema, he blames God for it. Alang nga nin, kasi, you know, yung, yung kanyang pagka-commitment niya is, you know, CEO, Christmas and Easter only. He doesn't truly really love the Word of God. He doesn't seek the Word of God. Alang nga nin. Pero sabi niya, Christiano siya. That is a double-minded person and that person is a sinner and because he's a sinner, <laughs> Do you find yourself and describe yourself to be half-baked Christian? Or are you all in? To be a disciple of Christ, Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, you must carry your cross. All the way. All in. Hindi pwede alanganin. Hindi pwede alanganin. So wash your hands. Now, obviously, when he says wash your hands, Literally, we cannot wash our sin. We cannot purify our heart. Here is the context is that how do you wash your hands and purify your, your heart? By submitting yourselves to God. That's how you do it. Come to the authority of God. Receive the righteousness of God. That's how you wash your hands and purify your heart. Look, then. Here's how you do it. Okay, we are very familiar with this. He says, two men went up into the temple to pray. Oh, dalawa. Dalawa sila nag-pray. One, a Pharisee, and the other, a tax collector. Dalawa. The Pharisee is obviously a very religious person. A tax collector is known to be a sinner. Okay? So what happened? Verse 11. The Pharisee, the religious person, standing by himself, prayed. Uy, nag-adasal. Nag-pray siya. Anong prayer niya? God. Very religious prayer. God, 
I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers. And then, Lord, itong katabi ko, even this tax collector. Then, sabi niya pa, here's the proud. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. Woo! Proud. Then, the humble. But the tax collector, the person who is known to be a sinner, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Result, I tell you, this man, the tax collector, went down to his house justified. Rather than the other, the Pharisee, for everyone who exalts himself, who is proud, the Pharisee, will be humbled. But the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Amazing. So wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Submit yourself to God. Then verse 9. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Now they are all really synonym. Okay? But what are these three words? Let's go to Mr. Walter. Grieve. To have a deep sorrow. Especially that caused by someone's death. So when, in relationship to our uh, spiritual standing before God, we need to have a deep sorrow na talagang, Lord, no, I am dead in sin. Have you ever come to that point? Or do you really feel, oh, okay naman ako eh. Okay lang ako. Have you ever grieved that you're to totally lost? Doomed? Totally depraved? That's grieving. Mourn. To feel or show deep sorrow, so very similar, or regret for someone. Who's the someone? Yourself. You are regretting all the things that you have done that is not in accordance to God. Are you regretting? So, grieve, mourn, and then look at this. And wail. Now, and wail is a physical demonstration of that grievances, or that grief and that mourning. A prolonged high-pitched cry of pain, grief, or anger. Ah, I don't or, a oh Lord, uh, I confess of my sin. I repent of my sin. That's not grieving. That's not wailing. Wailing is the result of an inner sorrow. Pinagsisihan talaga. Or, Okay naman ako eh. Hindi naman ako ganun, ka, naman ako ganun kasama. James is saying, grieve, mourn and wail. You have to understand. You have to know. You are totally lost. And then he says, change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Ano, pabanjing banjing ka, enjoy, enjoy ka ng life. No. It's, it, that's not the right time. Seek first the kingdom. Look at me in uh, Mark chapter 8. Uh, Jesus speaking. Calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Why? For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Next verse 36. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and for pity soul. Para ano? So what if you have the most convenient, the most luxurious, the most joyful life here on earth? And then spend eternity in hell? What? No! Now is the time to grieve. Now is the time to mourn. Now is the time to wail. For the grace of God is coming to an end. Luke 12. God said to him, remember about the uh, the man who, who, who had everything. Mayaman siya. He built barns and everything. But God said to him, You fool! This night, your soul is required of you. In other words, ko na yung gabi. So, what's it with your being, you know, uh, living a, a luxurious life? Para ano? And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? 
Kanyo na makukunta. Verse 21, So is the one who lays up treasure for himself, and here's the key. And, very important, is not rich toward God. I just want to emphasize that because laying up treasure is no sin. It's not sin to have um, a retirement fund. It's not sin to have insurance. It's not sin to, to build up. That's not sin. Here's the sin. If all you do is that and not rich towards God. In other words, not saved. Because that's the context. If you are not saved and you are just physically and materially rich, then what is it for? So change your laughter. Now is the time to mourn. Now is the time to repent. Now is the time to surrender and submit yourself to God. Now is the time to resist the devil and get out of this temptation. And if you're persistent in resisting him, in fighting him, in, in combating him, he will flee away. You know, that's the beauty. That's a promise. You see, the devil will not spend the rest of your the rest of his life trying to persuade you because there are millions and millions of people who is whom he can deceive so why would he spend his time on you if you keep on saying no to him if you keep on saying the first time you say no he will try again you say again no he'll try again maybe the third or fourth time you keep on saying no let me just go to somebody else so, conclusion. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will lift you up. Lift you up in the context will give you grace. To give you grace means will give you salvation. If you humble yourself, not counting on your own righteousness, not relying on your own good works, Submitting to what Christ has done on the cross, the culmination of the law. If that is who you are, he will lift you up. And he was talking to the church, to the people who already profess to be Christian. Once again, let me just remind you, do this today. And when I say today, well, if possible right now, if you haven't done so yet, where you have grieved, mourned, and wailed, because of your sin, but now in the time of repentance and grace. Now, why? Isaiah, once again, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Who is the uh, you? The wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God for he will freely pardon. The other verse, he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready. Okay, ready na. Everything is ready. Malapit na. But those invited were not worthy. Now, remember the story about the, this parable that uh, God invited uh, certain people, but certain people did not, did not attend. Then he said to his servants, invite everybody. And then people came in. But there were those who were not in proper wedding dress. So the wedding feast said, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite the wedding feast as many as you find. Those servants went out of the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. So nanduna siya, but not in the proper attire. So verse 12. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to his attendants, bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are cold, but few are chosen. What's the context? The context is that even people who are really quote unquote invited in the church, in the congregation, to hear the word of God, it is only those who has the proper attire, 
what the proper attire? The righteousness of Christ. Otherwise, even though you're exposed to the church, call yourself a Christian, you are super religious, the day will come, Jesus will say, I never knew you away from me, you evildoer. And finally, again, a reminder, as God's co-worker, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. What's that? Hindi yung alanganin. Hindi partial. It must be total surrender. Why? For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. In the day of salvation, I help you. So when is the time and when is the day? I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Do not delay it. Because the day might come when Jesus says, You fool! Today, tonight, your soul will be uh, will be taken away. You're going to die. And when you die without submission to God, then you'll be spending eternity in hell, even though you have been going to church, going to Bible study. Humble yourself before the Lord, and He will lift you up. Very serious, chapter 4, 5 to 10, after all the testings of chapters 1, verse 1, all the way to chapter 4, verse 4, 5 to 10, especially 7 to 10, is the invitation. So if in your checklist, the question right now is, what have you done with the invitation of the Lord? Have you been delaying it? Have you said yes? Or you still say, ah, tsaka na. Anyway, like a church naman ako eh. Ah, tsaka na, pag ano, nag-retire na ako. Anyway, malakas pa naman ako eh. Today is the day of salvation. So, um, let's open the floor for comments, questions, or concerns. Anyone? Who wants to start? <clears throat> yes, when? Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, thank you. You shared a lot of rich mga verses talaga dyan, mga parables, diba? Uh -oh. And uh, I actually have, have a lot of thoughts, but I, I want to start to sa prodigal son. Mm -hmm. okay. yung, yung prodigal son na nag-repent nag siya, diba? Tapos finally he went back dahil kinakain na niya yung mga kinakain yeah. ng mga baboy. Uh -oh. Now, maybe to, to understand the repentance better, no? kasi talagang nag-come siya to to a shameful ano talaga parang yung yung sa yung, when he came to his senses yeah yeah nako when your audio then, naputol na yung audio mo wala wala siya talaga sa tamang pag-iisip na off yeah yeah that's why i want to uh, parang backtrack a little bit in the story kasi what what did the son do no Nung nandun pa siya sa poder ng father niya, di ba, may elder brother siya, tapos siya yung younger. Yeah. He, he was the rebellious son. Siya yung hindi na makatiis na magstay pa doon sa pamamahay. He, he rejected and defied the ah. authority of his father. At, at hindi na siya makatiis na nandun pa siya sa poder. Ang, ang gusto niya mangyari, umalis na siya doon. Yeah. Kaya he, he insisted, di ba? He insisted, yeah. even though that was a very shameful practice. Meron bang anak buhay pa yung tatay hinihingi na yung inheritance? Yeah. It's, it's as if he's saying, I wish you were dead. Bigay mo na nga sa akin yan, hindi na ako makatiis dito. Lalayas na ako dito. Exactly. That, that's the kind of shameful, you know, like defiance and rejection of the father. Yung ginawa ng anak. And, and, and uh, itong parable na ito, it's really about God and us, di ba? Yun, yeah. yun yung relationship ng father tsaka ng son doon. Na, nung, nung nakalabas na yung son, ano ginawa niya doon sa inheritance niya? Kung saan saan niya pinagagastos yun? In fact, yeah. he, he was doing lewd things, di ba? Ginagastos niya yun sa mga shameful, mga last niya, pinagbibigyan niya kung ano nang ginagawa niya. 
And, and that that's why when he came to repent to his senses, grabe yung pagbagsak niya, grabe yung humility niya. Basically, he wanted realization. He wanted his will rather than the will of the Father. I remember mm -hmm. when uh, in grade school tayo, uh, we have elocution contests, right? Uh, I joined one, I think I, I joined uh, one of the, I, I think I joined two or three times. But the one time, I remember uh, the point that I did was yung, uh, I am the captain of my soul. Remember that? Uh, that is exactly... Invictus, yeah. Invictus. Invictus. I am the... Uh, ako ang boss. That is really the problem of man. When we want to become the boss instead of submitting to God's will. That's a problem of man. Yeah. Ooh. Exactly. So, anybody else? Oh, Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then the second, uh, the second command was to resist the devil, mm -hmm. and we cannot resist the devil unless, um, the Holy Spirit is in us. It will yes and no. Because remember, <clears throat> the focus of James is the. Uh, Doctrine of the free will of man. So the Holy Spirit, uh, when we speak about the sovereign election of God, that our spirit has been made alive by God, and so therefore we choose God. Okay, That is taken from the doctrine of the election of man. But the doctrine of the free will of man is that you make a choice to follow God. You resist the devil. You resist his temptation of being drawn away from God. That is why you know I, I heard this uh, once that if you are on your way to heaven, if you go to heaven, it is all because of the grace of God. If you are in hell, it is because you have chosen not to choose God. So you see, these two doctrines, Aroxan, are both found in scriptures. The election of God, totally the will of God, salvation is totally His. All at the same time, the free will of man, which means you are fully responsible for your salvation. You come to the Lord, you draw near to God, you choose God, you believe in God, you resist the devil. So these are all your responsibility. Yeah. So may another verb pala, Mike, yung accountable. You are also accountable <clears throat> for the consequences of your sin. Diba? Exactly. Pag, pag pumunta, ta pumunta tayo sa hell, then we cannot say, eh, kasi hindi, binig hindi ako inelect eh. Hindi exactly. binigay sa akin yung Holy exactly. Spirit. Yeah. And, and these two doctrines, like I said, are both found in scriptures. And James focuses on the free will of man. Submit to God. Sino yun? Ikaw yun. Resist the devil. Sino yun? Ikaw yun. Okay. Our part. Our, Our part. part, exactly. Our part. Kaya kasi ang, ang extreme Roxanne is this. Ah, God elects. Oh, since God elects, ano na ako, fold my arms anyway. Kung elect ako, di save ako. Kung hindi ako elect, di hindi ako save. Diba? That, that's the kind of the, the tendency to think if we just okay. say that it is the election of God. Which is true. But all at the same time, it is okay. our responsibility. Whoever believes in him will not perish. That means it's your choice and my choice. Uh, does that make sense, Roxanne? Yeah. This is a two doctrines that technically cannot be humanly, we cannot harmonize the two. Because they, they seem contradicting. Eh? But there mm -hmm. are things that are uh, seemingly contradicting and not because we do not understand it fully. That doesn't mean that it's not true. For example, another doctrine will be the Trinity. God is one. Amen. God is in three person. Amen. Now question, harmonize those two. You cannot. No? Both are both are true. But you know, we cannot we cannot fully explain that. But the day will come when we are glorified, then we will understand that. So for now, there are certain verses in scriptures that emphasizes the election sovereign uh, election of God. 
And there are verses, particularly in the book of James, is the human responsibility to act on his free will. Okay, Baroxan? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Any more? Enzo? Boy? Jer? Blair? Carlos? Ayaw na. Question. Uh, Mike, I want to follow up. Follow up on the hills of Roxanne. Mm -mm. Yung... Uh, Parang para din sa akin parehas ng ano ng stand ni Roxan na how can you resist the devil in your own if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit? Because that, that's what it says that you are responsible to resist the devil. That's why James is focusing fully on the free will of man. Uh, ang ina inaaro ko dito, you can only resist the devil if you put on the full armor of God. Again, because you are looking at the election of God. That we cannot choose God if God did not choose us. That's why Jesus said in the book of John, you did not choose me, I chose you. So that's the election of God. But James does not focus on the sovereign will of God, the sovereign election. He focuses on the responsibility of man. You submit to God. You resist the devil. Colossians, you put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature. So... So he focuses on that side. Okay. So it's not about a stand. We cannot, you cannot say, I am for this and I am for that. No, no, no. Both are present. So you cannot say, Ako, I am for God is one. You I am for God is three persons. No, no, no. Both are correct. Both are scriptural. Mike? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mike. In, in fact, if we cannot resist the devil, then it will be chaotic. It will be all chaos, which the devil is the anti-order being. So, yeah. lahat na lang ng evil ginagawa na lang natin. Yeah. I mean, if That's we cannot one. resist the devil, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I think we, we still have the capacity to resist. The problem is, can we really surrender to God? I think yun yung pinakamahirap gawin. Eh. Can we submit, di ba? Yung inexplain mo, Mike? Yeah. Uh, again, submission is the putting down one's will to be right with God. The Romans 10. They sought to establish their own and did not submit to God's righteousness. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yun, yung connection po nga dun. Because once we do that, then... Uh, then grace will operate, diba? And and yeah. it, it will be where your strength will lie. Yeah. Uh -huh. The power of Anana. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Holy Spirit. Who say, uh, Those who I'm seek me and seek me with all their hearts will find me. Again, that's human responsibility. That's human responsibility. That's the free will of man. You can choose God or you can choose to live a godly, worldly life. That's your choice. So, yung, yung ngayon, yung mga tao na, ay hindi, it's truly by election of God. I totally agree. But you cannot fold your arms and say, well, elected naman ako eh. No. Because those who are elected, all at the same time, are people who choose God. Who submit to God. Who resist the devil. And we know that those who resist the devil and those who submit to God are people who have been elected by God. <laughs> and I, I know it's kind of, ano, ano ba? which is which, you know? Uh, tama ka, Roxanne, ba? Pa -ikot -ikot. It's, it's a cycle. But both are true. The same thing with, who wrote the Bible? Well, who wrote the book of Romans? Paul. That's true. But you can also say, but the book of Romans was written by God. It is God breathed. So, sino ba? Si Paul ba or the Holy Spirit? Well, both. See? Yes, Dan? Mm -mm. I'm in my own uh, small uh, understanding, uh, as far as salvation is concerned, God gave us the switch to make a choice, mm -hmm. to switch it on whether to accept Him or not. Mm -hmm. Something like that. 
Uh, so, yung decision natin is we are also prodded by God to make a decision na mm -hmm. we believe in we trust Him. Yeah. So, parang uh, without God giving us the, the opportunity to to choose kasi siya nagbigay ng switch eh. parang switch ng ilaw yeah the other me, people are not given that switch the 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 control but let me, for let us me. he gives uh, he gives us uh, that opportunity and yet he prods us to make a choice kaya ang contribution natin is our obedience diba? yeah um let me go here okay and we are very familiar with this uh romans 1 for those of us who went to the book of Romans, you are familiar with this. Romans 1. Okay. we Let's start with. Um, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. So here again, uh, it is men who suppress the truth. It is their choice to suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has made it, has shown it to them. For the invisible attributes, namely eternal power, divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. Then here you go. So, therefore, they are without excuse. Why? Because they chose to suppress the truth. Uh, here is a, uh, the doctrine of the free will of man. Man is going to be under the wrath of God because they chose to suppress the truth. Meanwhile, God has invited everybody to know him by making things known. Ito, di ba? Sorry pa. Okay, let me start. For his attributes, eternal power, divine nature has been clearly perceived. In other words, Nature in itself is a call of God, by God, for people to submit to God, but people chose to do unrighteous things. And so therefore, they are without excuse and receive the wrath of God. Mike. Free will of man. Mm -mm. Yes. Mike. Yes. Boy. Could you could you show on the screen Matthew twenty three verse thirty seven to thirty nine? Matthew twenty three. Another verse. No, in, okay, verse thirty seven to thirty nine. Thirty seven. Thirty seven. Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones and stone those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? And you were not willing. You made a choice. Yeah, that's right. Your so... house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Okay. So what you're explaining is it also the same explanation to this verse. Correct. Yeah. They made a choice. You were not willing. The act of the will. The free will of man. So that is why both the, the sovereign election of God is clearly seen in scriptures. Romans 9. Before Jacob and Esau were born, God loved Jacob and God hated Esau. You what? So I mean, that's election. And then in chapter 10, the reason that you are not saved is because you sought to establish your own. That's the free will of man. So in a couple of verses, both the election and the free will of man are both explained. Pero sa book of James, he only focuses on the uh, human responsibility, which is to choose God, submit to God, resist the devil. Okay, Carlos? Enzo, Jer, Blair. Kuya Mike, uh, yes. we, we were made to believe no, no, mga unang paniniwala na being religious is the right way to become right with God. 
Mm-hmm. Ngayon, uh, na-realize ko dun sa sa ating bagaraw din ng scripture sa tulong ninyo na yung righteousness pala ang dapat. Hindi ka dapat maging religious. Kasi religious will suksunod lang dun sa mga batas, the law, but yeah. in their hearts, there's no righteousness. Yeah. Marami ako nakita ang ganun kasi na nasabing very religious. Uh-huh. Mga sisimba araw-araw. Pero yeah. pagdating ng mga buhay, ano din, hindi righteous ang buhay. Kasi if you talk about religious people, uh, at the time of Christ, there is no more religious, religious people than the Jewish people. They are zealous for God. That word zealous, extremely religious. And yet, they're lost. Why? Because they did not submit to God's righteousness. Not submit to God's way to attain righteousness, which is the imputed righteousness of Christ. That is the kind of righteousness, godly righteousness, that God will say, approve, approve. Now remember, ang context dito is the church. Okay? Always remember that, please. These are, this is a letter written to you and I. People already attend church, Bible study, call themselves Christian, uh, and yet probably, probably is not, has not, uh, as James would say, talagang grabbing description, no? Grieve, mourn, and wail. Three words. Synonym. In just a different angle. Pero ibig sabihin talaga, total pagsisisi, total acceptance that we are totally lost. Until you come to that senses. Okay, until you come to that senses. Frankly speaking, you are not going to run to God. And if you do, you think, pumunta ako kay God, pero alam ko, accepted naman ako. Eh. No, no, no. You should come at the prodigal son and say, Father, I am no longer uh, worthy to be called your son. Pero some of us kasi, we think we are worthy. Eh. That we, we we are worthy to attain salvation. Eh, nag-church naman ako eh. Religious naman ako eh. Remember, your attendance of this Bible study will not bring you to heaven. Huh? That's right. Ulitin ko. Your attendance to this Bible study will not bring you to heaven. It is your repentance before God totally accepting that you are lost on your way to hell, evil people, and go to God for the righteousness that is given freely by grace through His Son is how you will get saved. That's why our allegiance is on God, not on the pastor, not on the priest, not on the denomination, not the local church. It's on God. I cannot overemphasize that. <clears throat> Mike, may you share yeah. with you? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, I was thinking kanina about, you were talking about the lukewarm Christians. Mm-hmm. And of course, you knew, I, I think it followed your explanation about being religious. Nga, no? mm-hmm. um, and, and if you look at this, <clears throat> um, even tayo may yung mga bashmates natin a lot of them uh are really in that state yung they're they're good men mm-hmm. they uh <clears throat> they love their family they're good providers and then uh yung career nila okay mabait sila sa mga employees nila mm-hmm. and then they also attend bible studies once in a while apart from going to church regularly yeah. diba pero <clears throat> Uh, somehow kulang yung <clears throat> righteousness ni God, right? Mm-hmm. N- nandun sila sa state where h- hindi nila babaguhin yung lifestyle yeah. na yun because they feel that that's good and that's enough. Uh, right. And, <clears throat> and that's what the, the work-life uh, spiritual balance is it, just tama lang talaga, di ba? So, yeah. uh, but, but from the eyes of God, yan ang tingin dyan kasi yung look, lukewarm na sinabi sa Revelation 3.16. Because you are lukewarm, you are neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Exactly. 
ganun ka katindi yung tingin niya doon sa isang tao ah uh, wala yung righteousness si Cristo because they ano eh ang pinipili nila dito is on their own terms kung ano yung kung paano sila maging cut and cut righteous di ba and to them this is their own definition of being righteous yeah so i'm talking about the good people i'm not talking about yung, yung mga kurako to yung mga yeah. ano exactly. which are deplorable di ba yung mga murderers so, hindi uh, hindi na magano eh these are good righteous people responsible fathers and yeah. di ba and when you know what according to the text oh. we just read and and the one that you quoted from the book of revelation when the lord says i would rather have you hot or cold mas okay pa kung cold ka eh. but because you are lukewarm i'm going to spit you out did you know that people who are semi christian if there's such a term a semi christian is far worse in standing before god than those who are fully anti god you are either all in or better not at all mas okay pa yun grabe no ah, kaya isa pa ni james you sinners you double minded that word double minded is wavering Alam nga ni Christian ba siya kung hindi? Uh, mukhang Christian. Mukhang Christian, pero eh, hindi pala Christian. Ano pala? Karabaw pala. <laughs> Goat pala. Eh, mukhang sheep. Mukhang saved. Laging may Bible, ganda-ganda. Lagong bagong paligo, ganda ng bihis. You know? God hates those Ma- people far worse I repeat, far worse than those people who are totally not with God. That's very dangerous to be religious. Very dangerous. Yes, Con. Kasi, ka, kasi Mike, ang ano dyan, nag-a-appear, uh, lumalabas sila na mga hypocrites, just like the Pharisees. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, what, and what did Paul says to, say to Timothy? In the last days, you will find people who have the form of godliness yeah. but denying its power yeah. its power yeah. mukhang kristiyano pero hindi kristiyano that is why james focuses please please i urge you submit to god resist the devil he will flee away okay enzo ah uh, sino pa um Uh, good evening, brother Mike. Uh-oh, good evening. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Ano, kasi yung pinag-usapan natin is, kanina also is yung free will of man. Mm-mm. Kasi for me, free will of man is also a grace from God. Correct. Kasi we are totally depraved. So Correct. how can we... How can we exercise our own free will if Correct. it is not by the grace of God? I totally agree. Pero your your what your statement right now, Jer, is coming from the Calvinistic point of view, and I totally understand because we are totally depraved. Okay. Pero si James kasi dito ang approach niya. He is not talking about the responsibility of God of of his election. He is talking about the full responsibility of man. But I totally agree. How can we choose God if we do not have, like Tapani Kohn, you do not have the Holy Spirit? If you did not choose us, Tapani Jesus, you did not choose me, I chose you. So I totally agree. Pero sa topic na ito, this is only focusing on the full responsibility of man. So yes, sir, totally agree with you. So Mike, Yes, boy. Uh, I heard I heard one pastor na nag 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 uh, explain about the sovereignty and the free will uh-huh. to the point na sinabi niya that the free will of man is somewhat like a hindrance or the limitation of God's uh, sovereignty or election. Correct. Do you want to comment on that? I totally agree. At, uh, because God is sovereign, he's in full control. Totally agree. Except that in this text, James focuses on the free will of man. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo eh, itong dalawa, you will see this all over scripture. The election of God, the sovereign will of God, 
Then we also see the free will of man. That's why in the beginning, I quoted you many verses that speaks about the responsibility of man. So if, if, if I will try to harmonize the two, let me put it this way. All those who have been elected will choose God. And everybody who chooses God are elected. <laughs> Would that make sense? <laughs> okay. Ganun <lang> yun eh. <laughs> That's the best explanation. Uh, yeah. what, Brother Mike. What worries me, Mike, what worries me, Mike, in that in that in that comment is the word limitation that the free will of man is a limitation to God's sovereignty in his election. That's 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 my that's my worry. Yeah. Why uh, yeah. why know, would it be a it is sige, sige. limited because the word sovereign means full control. That's the word sovereign. So if you are saying, from the point of view of that pastor you are saying, if you are saying that man is making a free choice, therefore God is not sovereign. But sovereign is full control. So ibig sabihin, merong part control na hindi sa kanya. Belongs to man. Yeah. But the reality is this, both are found in scriptures. You know, I, I cannot fully harmonize. Kaya ang conclusion, every person who has been elected before the foundation of the world will choose God. And everybody who chooses God have been elected before the foundation of the world. Okay? Kayo na bahala ang mag-harmonize nun. <laughs> okay, done. Yes. Okay, Mike. Diba sabi ni R.C. Sproul, if I may quote him, it's like a parallel track of uh, the, the train, diba? This yeah. parallel will never meet, but we'll get to uh, have the full understanding when we get there. And right. so pa yung, uh, Tanong Mike, if we choose God, diba? free will nga, diba? we choose God, will God reject us if we are not elected? Uh, if we choose God, uh, rejected, hindi tayo elected, eh. will he reject right. us? That's not possible because like I said, every person has been elected will choose God. And okay. everybody who chooses God have been elected. Okay. Uh, na ako. <laughs> okay. Pero that's not the whole point. Our lesson for today is not to harmonize the two doctrines. The lesson for today is you take seriously if you have truly have submitted yourself to God. And Brother the, Mike. The, the big gauge is you truly have mourned, grieved, and wailed towards your sin against God. David in says, God, to you and you only have I sinned. Yes, Jer. Uh, brother Mike, baka ang inano dito ni James, binabalidit niya yung free will of man. Exactly. Uh, parang tinitis din niya na if we uh, choose God, we yeah. must make sure that our choosing God is really genuine. Exactly. That's what siguro yung inaano niya dito, ina-emphasize. Yeah. And besides, no, Jer, it's probable that the, that, 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 that the church in that, uh, that uh, James was writing, the Jewish people, already have been thinking, we are chosen people of God. Why bother? Chosen people tayo, eh, di ba? James chapter 1 verse 1, to the 12 tribes of Israel. And the Jewish people, all their life, they have been thinking they are the sovereign elected children of God. And James is clarifying dito. No, you have a responsibility. Have you submitted? Have you resisted? That's why in the book of Romans, not all Israel are Israel. Remember that? Uh, book of Romans? Say, hindi porket judyo ka, automatic anak ka. And then in the book of John, when the people said, no, we are children of Abraham. We are the children of God. And said, Jesus, no, you are the children of the devil. So your ethnic background, your religious background does not determine whether you are a child of God or not. Okay. Enzo. Hi, Enzo. Hi, yes. Malabre tayong magkita, ends Two months na lang. Oh, sorry, Brother Mike. <laughs> yeah. Maraming pinagkakabala. I am reviewing the other lessons. Uh -oh. uh, James is very nice. 
nga laging naiigo, laging yatamaan. Oh, yeah. laging guilty pala na. So mm-hmm. yung nga, maganda yung lesson about ano, yung submission, self submit yourself to God mm-hmm. and humility. So yeah. you should be humble. So even though yung nga, alam na natin back in Romans that we are truly saved, but in James yun nga na ano ka na Are you truly saved? Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Totoo so, uh, you, submit, you submitted to yourself to God. You repented. But did you uh, did you truly repented? Parang yun yung exactly. yung checklist. Yeah. So, ang, ang ganda ng lesson. Yeah. Thank you. Kasi nga, yun, alam mo, Enz, no? uh, kasalanan, kasalanan ng mga Christians to eh. Sometimes we think that a person becomes a Christian by leading him in in a a prayer of acceptance. Okay, uh, nag-pray na yun na accept it. Lord, uh, I repent of my sin. What does that mean? It's only a verbal confession. Kaya si James emphasized the internal feeling, grief and mourning. That's, that's internal. And then the external demonstration, wailing. Palagang hindi lang to yung, Lord, I I am a sinner. I confess of my sin. I receive Jesus in my heart. We welcome to the family. No. Okay. Uh, talaga, uh, once na uh, talaga ma-realize mo na you are destined for hell. Exactly. But hindi mo na-realize talaga totally. You will, uh, wala lang, okay lang. Uh, yeah. Alam ko naman, save naman ako. Parang yun niya. Exactly. Uh, I'm elected. So, yeah. happy. Uh, kasi yun niya, maraming bang... Maray pa naman dadaan ang bata pa ako. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. Well, James, James is very ano, insightful yeah. na. Ano ka na? Remind ka na, encourage ka. Yeah. And so, ang uh, sinasabi mo, ang sinasabi mo, yung sinabi ng prodigal son, when he came to his senses, okay, when you start to realize this, when you understand your true condition, there's your true spiritual condition that you are spiritually bankrupt, only then, Will you come before God and call upon His name? That's the only time. Mike? Yes. Yes. Go on. Uh, uh, yung tatlong description, mourn, wail. Ano pa yung isa? Yung nauna? Uh, grieve. Grieve. Uh, oh, grieve. Para sa akin, uh, yun ang prodigal son. Yeah. Yeah, ng didepekto yun ng, ng ano niya, uh-huh. ng, ng, ano, ng exactly. condition niya, condition ng kanyang heart. Exactly. Great mourn and wail. Well, that is what and then, we, and yeah. then what I have learned also from that story is that no matter what we have done in life, if we come near to God, God will come near to you. He, he will never yeah. reject us. Just Perhaps. as the father in the prodigal son story, kahit anong ginawa pa, yeah. it's in his niya yung yeah. ano niya, inheritance. Pero God so, accepted her. The song is a Peter. It says, hmm. he does not want anyone to perish but that everyone would come to repentance see and that word repentance is to grieve to mourn mm-hmm. and to wail total na pagsisisi eh sino pa ano si ipad pro sino ba si ipad pro ipad pro hi uh, that's Medina huh? Medina yes Mm-mm. any thoughts on your side Mon? Mod Well, um, well, it's really difficult to die to oneself, like completely surrender to God's will. But then we should realize that there is always grace. And grace comes uh, con- in conduit with our faith, believing in Jesus Christ alone. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So um, even if we... find it difficult to die to ourselves. But then we should, again, be thankful that there is still grace. That, yes. But you know, let it's me, the righteousness of Christ. Let me correct that a little bit, uh, Medina. Okay. Uh, dying to self is both something that happens at a certain point, and it's also something that continually happens. Okay? Um, okay. Uh, okay, uh, for American, uh, let me see here. Uh, likewise, see that. okay, here, verse 4. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died. This is an event that happened in the past. 
with a past tense, died. So it is not something that you are dying to. It's something that you have died. When you are in Christ, you have died to sin. Yes. All at the same time, we are dying in our acts of sin. Mm -hmm. okay? So, yeah, you are correct. Uh, we are dying to sin as far as, you know, uh, making our life more and more like Christ. Yes. But at the same time, we already have died to sin. That is why we have the righteousness of Christ. That is why after you have put your faith in Christ, you have died to sin. And that is what is represented. Uh, uh, rep uh, and that is represented. Uh, that is what is being represented in water baptism. Now, in water baptism, when you go under the water, it represents dying to sin. And when you come out of the water, you have lived for Christ. Okay. okay. So, but meanwhile, we are being sanctified. Okay, so yeah. ongoing. Yes. Thank and you. Colossians 3, I think that is what you are referring to, Colossians 3. Since you are in Christ, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. So yes, there is a continuation of putting to death. All at the same time, we are already dead. <laughs> Again, that is uh, seemingly, uh, what do you call this? Yes, uh, I get what Thank you, Mike. Okay, you're welcome. Paradox. Paradox. No, Mike. Uh, Mike, can we can we ask sino yung nagsalita dahil hindi siya nakapangalan dito sa ating song? Nina. Oh. Nina. You know that yeah. happened because my internet was intermittent like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how uh, I lost my name here. I I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I can rename you. Uh, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. The there you go. Okay, okay. Okay. We Can you are... use a different device? Can you use a different device? You lose your name. Okay. Um, in as much as you know, I want to go further, we are way over time. Uh, you know, time to go to sleep. And maybe the Lord returns uh, tonight while you're asleep and while I'm awake, hopefully. But all at the same time, you know, to live is Christ. And so we need to keep ourselves busy. Um, and if this lesson is not for you, maybe you are already assured of salvation. Praise the Lord for that. But there might be people around you who are still lost, although by themselves they think that they are already in Christ. Okay? You need to help them understand the whole book of James is dedicated to people who are who think that they are saved when in reality they are lost. And these are people primarily who are religious people. Religious people. Okay. All right. So, Dan, may I have Dan? Yeah, actually, even in our life group, I, 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 I can sense that not everyone in my life group are truly Christians. You know? mm -hmm. So yeah. that's our role, to really explain well, so that hopefully, uh, by God's uh, mercy and grace, they will they will really repent of their sins and yeah. trust Jesus as their Lord. And Janae, and the, yeah. the, 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 uh, the good situation is parang sa isda ba na hinuhuli mo, nandiyan lang sa, nasa, nandun na sa lambat eh. Yan yeah. ang patang yeah. sabah. Hindi, yeah. hindi pa na huhuli. That, that's why, sabi nga, in, uh, there will be gnashing of teeth. Kaya yung pang gnashing of teeth pala, yung panghinayang, nandun na ako sayang, hindi pa ako nakapasok. Mm, yeah. Uh, no, ni Monina. It's Monina. Sorry. There you go, Monina. Um, again, for all of you, uh, you might want to use this video uh, to sit down with somebody, you know, kaibigan mo ba, or the group mo ba, sa cell group mo ba, to watch together. You can cut off the Q&A. It's important to you, okay? You can cut this off. And you'll be the one to entertain their questions. Pero yung, yung meat of the lesson, watch it together. Sit down with them. Okay? Invite some friends. Uh, yung mga kaibigan mo. Uh, kasi ano na eh? I mean, now is the day of salvation. Now is God's time of favor. Now, 
the grace of God is still available. But the time will come, cut off na yan. We cut off na. Kaya nga, Mike, uh, in our case, uh, this would be a very good lesson for us next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, last week, yung rapture yung kailangan ko. And yung pasal yung... Yeah. Uh, so ito, follow-up lesson naman ito. Yeah. So interchange ko yung Romans and uh, Book of Romans and uh, James. So yeah. ito, this mm -hmm. will be very timely for us. Kasi yun nga, sa amin, hindi mo... Of course, uh, from my point of view, na 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 sense ko naman yun, na observe yeah. naman naman yung tunay. Pero sa kanila, they think, they yeah. think, they are already... I want to suggest, alam ko kayo, ikaw dan siya kasi baboy magkasama kayo, sila Jerry, you be the one to answer the Q&A. Okay? So after the lesson, stop mo na yung video, cut it off, and then open it up for Q&A. And, um, you know, prepare your computer for the Bible kasi you might quote, you know, James chapter so and so, so you can show it on the screen and uh, you can explain. The same thing with all of you. Lowell, sa uh, group mo, if you want to use this. Or maybe you can just teach the whole thing uh, if you want to. Okay? Uh, Roxanne, I don't know if you have a group. Uh, you, you can also use this. And everybody else. Blair, uh, Carlos, Jer, alam ko Jer, Enzo, uh, Monina, sa, sa, what do you call it? Iloilo. Okay? Gather all your friends, John. Put mo lang, lagay mo sa widescreen. And then sa Q&A portion, you might want to end it there and then you'll be the one to reply. If you think that you are equipped, if not, then run it all the way, including this portion, the Q&A. Okay, okay. Okay?